Uh, so today I'll be talking about scaling analytics at Intercom. Uh, as Karen mentioned, my name is Bobby Panero. I'm the Director of Finance and Analytics here at Intercom. Uh, if you're on Twitter, you can find me at Bobby Panero. Uh, so a little bit about what I'll talk about. Uh, I spent some time just reflecting on my time here at Intercom, uh, and I've got some principles uh, just about how I've brought in analytics at Intercom, hiring, uh, how we structured the team, and then how the team actually engages with the rest of the organization. Uh, but before we get started, just quickly, what is Intercom? Uh, Intercom is one place for every team in, every, in any internet business to interact with their customers uh, personally and at scale. Uh, so Intercom by the numbers. I joined Intercom two and a half years ago. I joined October of 2013. Uh, I was a 22nd employee here at Intercom. Uh, we're, now about two, uh, we're now about 250 plus employees. I was the first analytics hire. We're now 13 on the analytics team in that time. Uh, and in two and a half years, we've added about 10,000 customers and $110 million to the bank account. Great, so let's get started. Uh, when to bring in analytics. And the principle here is it's, it's really, really simple. Uh, it's when you think you need an analyst, you're already behind. And it's something that I'm consistently, consistently reminding myself of and others in the organization. The way that I think about it is running a business, building a product, kind of managing any project, it's really just a, a set of decisions. It's a series of decisions. One decision leads to another, leads to another. Most of the time, the people making those decisions, though, aren't analysts. They're the CEO, they're the PM, the online marketing manager, uh, the sales rep, et cetera. And their bias is to bring in analytics at the end. They go about this process of making these decisions to get to a certain point, and analytics comes in at the end. Analytics are the people that measure whether those decisions were the right decisions. Uh, they tell them whether or not they were right or wrong. And that's a place for analytics, but it's not really fantastic. And it kind of reminds me of man's early attempts at flight. Uh, basically, men just, men and women, uh, strapped wings to their arms, launched themselves off of cliffs, uh, and hoped that they would. And it wasn't until we understood aerodynamics. It wasn't until we unlocked the secrets of Bernoulli's principle that we could actually design planes. And so again, the bias is analytics starts at the end. Analytics is after the fact. And what, where we've been the most successful, or for the functions and products that have been the most data-driven, have been measured the best after the fact, is when we pulled in analytics early. When I joined, it's when we, we started a marketing analyst before we built out a marketing team, uh, et cetera. So who to hire first? Um, the, uh, the principle here is get the data right, or get the right data, and get the data right. Uh, if I could do this all over again, so the first four people that we hired at, on the analytics team at Intercom were analysts. Uh, if I could do it all over again, the very first person I'd hire here is, uh, a data, would be a data engineer. And there's this principle in software engineering that's called technical debt. The, the, the concept is uh, debt increases as the complexity of your code base increases. And the complexity of your code base increases as you continue to, continue to write code and you don't refactor it. Uh, and as you do that, the unexpected errors in your code base increase, uh, the bugs increase. And what happens is the velocity at which you're actually able to ship new product to your customers decreases, as does the trust. And this concept applies to data. Data debt is technical debt. So again, if I could do it all over again, I'd hire a data engineer to be, to be the first person on the analytics team. Data is a foundation upon which you build uh, your analytics organization to invest in it early. How have we organized the team? So we organized ourselves as what I call a centralized partnership. And a centralized partnership looks like this. Uh, so analytics all sits together. Uh, we report up through the same organization. Uh, we work together. Uh, but we have analysts that partner with each, with each of the functions of the organization. So analysts that partner with product, anal analysts that partner with growth, with marketing, and with sales. 
And there's really two benefits to this. Uh, the first is the analysts themselves gain expertise or feel ownership over the particular functions that they're working with. And then the functions themselves have a point person that they can do go to when they need analytic support. And then the analytics team themselves, we get the benefit of actually having a centralized team. So like knowledge sharing and tools are about. Uh, and we get to work with the, the, the analysts to develop their careers. And most importantly, a lot of the most interesting projects that the team works on lot, sits at the cross section of, say, growth, marketing, and sales. And so we have visibility to prioritize those projects and have the analysts actually go work on them. And then finally, how do we actually engage with our state? The principle here is there's a difference between what people say, what people say they want, and what they really want. I'll give you an example. So let's say the marketing dinosaur comes to the analytics mouse and says, how many visits did we get last month? And the analyst, for the analyst, it's easy. 100,000 plus 5% month to month. That's, that's the right answer, but it's not particularly insightful. Um, and it's particularly not insightful because it's not the right question. Really, a great analyst or a great analytics team rephrases that question or gets to what the actual objective of the marketing team or what the intent of the marketing team, the, mar uh, the marketer in this case, uh, is trying to get at. And, and perhaps that's asking back a question of, are you asking if we grow our audience? And that leads to a much richer analysis, a much richer, um, a much richer answer. So again, analytics responsibility here is to define and answer the right question, define objectives and success, and prioritize those uh, analysis against those objectives. So in summary, when you think you need an analyst, you're already behind. Data debt is technical debt for analytics. We like our model of centralized partnerships. We'll continue to use it for the near term. And what people say they want isn't actually what they really want. Thank you. I'm Bobby Panero. Find me afterwards. Ask me any questions you want. Thank you.